Hey everybody, and welcome back to the show. Good, glorious Monday to you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. On our last episode, we had a special guest, and he is here to join us again. Give it up for Old Man Boone. Ahoy. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time, Boone. I really appreciate it. Uh, and for any of those who didn't catch the last episode, why don't you give a very quick blurb about yourself, Boone? No, I am an experimental filmmaker. I'm uh, in West Virginia, uh, and I, uh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm uploading a video a week, if you're interested. And that channel will be linked at the end. I promise we got to show some love to our guest, our wonderful guest, who have, again, taken the time out of their day. I really appreciate it. So to jump straight into our discussion today, we're going to be talking about the weird allure that the creative fields seem to hold over computer science and technologically inclined people in general. Now, I know from experience that Boone is a very tech savvy individual, and uh, I'm coming from that same camp myself. Strictly anecdotally, we have found that there's a handful of us that started out in computer science programs and then sort of migrated into film over time. Now, Boone, why don't you kind of share some of your thoughts on why this strange phenomena may be happening? <laughs> so uh, to give a little context to what you're saying, uh, three out of 10 of our graduating class were ex-computer science. <laughs> and uh, I, the main theory that I had about that was that uh, the, the sciences and the arts sort of have a, a similar draw to where like they require you to problem solve and to be thinking about things in a certain way. But then the big issue for computer science is that uh, those, those both draw the same kind of people. Uh, there is a math barrier for computer science. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know about for you, but uh, I, I was a semester into computer science and I hated the math so much because everything was about discrete structures and about computing languages. And I was just I was having the worst possible time trying to wrap my head around it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, Boone. Uh, in my first semester, I squeaked through discrete mathematics for computer science just barely by the skin of my teeth. I, had, I was not having a good time. I was really struggling there. Uh, my own thought, and I'm really glad you brought this up and kind of funny that we're on the same wavelength here since we didn't discuss this beforehand. I really do think that there's a big draw about the problem solving aspects. There's problem solving all the time in computer science. You need to be able to understand what your underlying issues are and really kind of what the client is asking as well and be able to build a program that is filling those needs. Uh, in that process, you're going to of course have debugging, but you also might have debugging on a film set. If you're an hour and a half behind schedule when you're trying to get through a shoot in a solid 12 hour day, you might find that you need to maybe cut corners or find ways to just speed up. Or if you don't have the exact tool you need, you're going to find a way to solve the problem on set. It's just a matter of kind of knowing what your tools are, what you have available, and finding the best solution. And I think that really kind of holds true for both the creative fields and film specifically, and computer science. So it's really great that you touched on that, Boone. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was doing horribly in all of those computer science classes. I was like scraping by with D's and C's and. Uh, uh, so honestly, it's a little frustrating because uh, my my final GPA, like looking at my grades, I was getting like A's and B's and like uh, after I switched. But if I looked at before it, I had all of those uh, computer science classes, which were just atrocious grades. <laughs> Do you think you're happier doing what you're doing now than you would have been if you had stuck with the computer science program and worked in that field? Uh Personally, absolutely. I had originally applied for uh, I had originally applied for Virginia Tech. I had planned to go there for computer science. I, despite the fact that uh, my grades were uh, really good with say like things like English and uh, like social science versus say like hard mathematics, my grades were mediocre with mathematics, but. I, for some reason, had it in my head that computer science was the way. Computer science was how I was going to live the rest of my life. But uh, 
honestly, beyond that, I didn't really have any goals. So when it was a bit devastating when computer science wasn't working out and I just sort of uh, went into film just out of a whim because I had you know made some, I imagine most people have made crappy camcorder you know, projects when they were younger. I had done a few of those and I was like, you know what, let's, let's give this a try. And if, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have, uh, you know, I would have, wouldn't have found anything that I was this passionate about. You know, I was just with computer science, even looking back, I was more just going through the motions because it's what I thought I should do is like, oh, it's, it's respectable. You do work with computers. Everyone's like, oh yeah. <laughs> do you find that there's kind of like a lack of that same respect in the creative fields well uh at, at the end of the day I, I think it comes down to like I, I i don't think there's necessarily that respect you know like people don't value the work or if they do value the work they don't value it enough to pay you <laughs> but mm. uh but at the end of the day it's there's nothing like it and it, even if it's not film if you can find something that when you think of it, there's no work like it. I think that's the, the big one. So I've been asking myself the question of happiness a lot lately. Would I have been happier in a computer science related field? And there's one thing I know for sure, and that's that the pay is better. But would that have really kind of like made me whole? Uh, it's easy for me to kind of forget about the late nights I spent debugging and bashing my head against a keyboard uh, and kind of easier to think about what could have been. And I think it's really kind of a question of the grass is greener on the other side. Um, my wife reminds me all the time about how unhappy I was back then and how much more whole I became after I stopped trying to follow that path. So it's really kind of a question of being able to find what's right for you and follow down that path. And if it's something that you would have been doing at home if you weren't in the middle of work and you can say that you love it whether you're getting paid or not i think that's really something special here uh it'd be nice if we were getting paid i don't want to be paid in exposure but it's great that <laughs> it's really great that we get to do something that we love here any closing thoughts boone on what aspiring filmmakers slash computer scientists <laughs> may want to consider before they kind of walk their own path. I think the big one is just um, be, uh, be it troubleshooting in computer science or be it troubleshooting in filmmaking. If, you would, if you're having fun, that's, that's the first step and just keep working on it, keep trying to improve. I think one of the biggest things you can do is enjoy learning new elements to something. And one of my favorite elements about just the fact that the internet exists and that the you can you know make videos like this online is the fact that you can see what other people are doing you can be like take little uh, elements of what they teach you and then combine them into a to something entirely your own if, if you're if you're willing to, to to put in the time and you're having fun with it that's all you need that's a that's a beautiful thought to be ending on there baron uh, I remember that one of our professors at Wright State was really fond of the saying, everything is plagiarized. Everything's been done before. <laughs> but if you can kind of cherry pick all those little things that have already been done, maybe you can something, maybe you can create something that's new and beautiful and hasn't been seen before. And I think that's going to wrap it up here, just kind of ending on that high note. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us, Boone. I really appreciate you being here. Yeah. Uh, it's been fun. Thanks for having me. I've got uh, one more thing if uh, if you'd like to hear it. Uh, yes, please, please. So, popular artists steal, great artists remix, but uh, fun artists uh, cobble together monstrosities and unleash it onto the world. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, that's that's so you, Boone. I really love it. And uh, we're going to we're going to end it here. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you all next Monday. Bye now.